We're live. Look at her with the audio book. It was twenty two dollars plus shipping. Uh, yes, for 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 what it's 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 an itty bitty book. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our discussion for March for the Harpy. Oh, I hear echoing. Is it just me? Okay, never mind. Had the stream open in a different channel too. Great, going so well to start. I think first and foremostly, we need to ask the most important question, which is Tiana, did you finish the book? Of course I finished it. I finished it with like three minutes to spare before I, I went into the, the <laughs> It is a talent, okay? It is a sheer talent. I don't know how I did it. Expect Especially nothing less. Mercury and retrograde, I don't know how, but we did it, okay? So what is everybody <laughs> drinking tonight? Water, because I need to survive tonight. <laughs> I'm also drinking We're water all... because, yeah. <laughs> because I, Full just, summer March. <laughs> I got the first shot of the vaccine today. Nice. So, um, I'm not feeling great, so we just need to rest up. Hydrate, <laughs> yeah. honey. It's a vibe. Yeah. Yes. But, um, <laughs> yes. Cool. Honestly, I, I want to drink. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I'm sad though because I I like bought a wine and everything. It's one of my favorites, and I was like, I'm gonna crack it open. We're gonna have like a boot, like a boozy sesh. Um, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, no, I cannot do that tonight. So sorry, guys. I will be boozed up for the next live show though. I'm excited Very, for that one. I excited yeah, I think it's a great option. I'm feeling I'm warming up, but I feel ready to talk about this book. Yes. Um, we're gonna do some non-spoilery discussion. So anybody who has yet to read it or is not finished with it or is just joining us post live stream, this will hopefully not too drastically affect your reading experience. Um, but I first thought we could just go around the room and say what star rating we gave the book. Just the number, what you thought. Um, Blake, how about you start? Uh, yeah, I give it a three stars. Um, which for like, okay, so here's my rating system. Let me just explain. Cause everybody's is like a little different. So books, whenever I read them, they start out as a three star. And then if they improve, then they can like earn a star. They can also lose stars. Like I just keep mental track of it in my head. Sometimes they will go all the way down to two or one, but like pretty much they always started at three and then go up or down from there. Um, and the harpy, like it went up a little bit, like in the middle, but then it kind of went down a little again at the end. So like, it was like three stars for me is like, it was fine. Uh, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, like for me, a two stars is like not good. One is a, like I hated it. Four is a really liked it. And five is a absolutely loved it. So, like, I thought this was a good book. What about you, Ace? Honestly, I'm not even sure because, like, most of the book, I was like, this is a solid five out of five book just because I really enjoyed the writing and the pacing. And then the, like, these in-between chapters, those pages, I really enjoyed those pages of her basically, like, kind of dissociating and seeing mm -hmm. herself as something else. But then the ending is what, caught me kind of off guard and I didn't know how to feel about the book anymore and that's why I gave it like a four of, out of five stars yeah Tiana I think I'm the lowest rating <laughs> <laughs> I, gave this, I gave it a generous two um, oh. because wow. if I want to go read about depressed moms and divorcees I go on Facebook <laughs> truly <laughs> So when I was reading this book, I was like, okay, like, I'm supposed to feel bad because your husband cheated on you. You're making it, a, like, you can make it about you. You can feel whatever you want to feel, but, like, taking it to the next level, embarrassing him, hurting him, like, I'm Hey, like, hey, non-spoilery section, Tiana. Non-spoilery <laughs> okay, section, okay. just, you know. So just like the general, like, her and her feelings, yes, you can feel, you can feel sad. You can feel however you want to feel. You're, you are valid. But when you past that line and making it to like this next level nonsense. Cause like Gone Girl, hilarious. Gone Girl's a cop. Hilarious. Gone Girl is funny, okay? This, I didn't laugh as much. Like I was laughing and I was like, ha, ah, okay, I get it. But if I want to go see this type of narrative, I'll go on Facebook. <laughs> okay, okay. They didn't put that blurb on the back. Um, <laughs> just. <laughs> 
but it's a strong one. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, I, I'm kind of in the three star rank as well. Um, I I don't regret reading it, but I don't think I would like reference it anytime soon or or go back to it anytime soon. Um, but I enjoyed my experience enough where like, yeah, it was not a waste of time. That's not high praise, but like that's that's certainly how I felt. Yeah, I think this is the most divisive book we've had so far. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm actually excited to talk about it. <laughs> I, I <laughs> feel weird that I'm the only one with like the highest rating. Well, like to be fair, Ace, there were points in the book where I thought I was maybe going to do it a, like a four star. Um, but then the ending, I think, kind of took it down for me. Yeah. We won't talk about spoilers yet. But, I think um, the ending really determines a book. Like, the, it, like, there's always beginning, middle, ending for everyone. And mm -hmm. then it's like how you're left with the book and how it leaves with you, I think, determines our star reading, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think perhaps it can. For me, I don't know if, if it is as important as the, I don't know if, like, the journey is, like, more important than the, you know, destination. <laughs> but um, The journey is hard to get through. <laughs> <laughs> there are definitely books that like hated the ending, but I loved most of the book that I like would change the rating accordingly. Um, like, well, that's because I grew up reading Stephen King, and he's not the best at endings. So, <laughs> um, if you had one word with which to describe this book, what would your word be, Tiana? You seem eager to answer this question first. God. Obsessive. I would call this book obsessive. Sorry, I'm going aggressive today. <laughs> no, that's a good word. I mean, that's that's a lot about what it's about. That's a lot of the energy. I think that's great. What about Blake? I would say like vengeful is is my word. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. That's a strong word. I can't Ace. think of one. I was going <laughs> to say psycho, but she's not that crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... If that's, I mean, yes, I think that's perfectly reasonable um, given this content. Um, for me, given its like aura, its feel, its vibe, I would say like wicked. It's a little bit mystical. It's a little bit, you know, something, but it's also very sinister. Um, so wicked, I think, encapsulates my feelings that way. Um, but have any of you read anything? Oh, but what? No, I'm just saying, like, yeah, that tone, that that word, I think, perfectly describes, like, the overall tone. It felt almost kind of like a dark fairy tale at times, and I did enjoy the tone of that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's... Like, the tone was We'll good. talk more about that, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, does this book remind you of any other books that you've read before? Like, if you had, like, a straight comparison? When I was reading it, my biggest comparison was Mary Gateskill. Um, the, the very toxic romantic relationship, the, you know, unhealthy, you know, is this a turn on, is this a turn on, like, what is the vibe here? Kind of like back and forth, I think is very Mary Gateskill. Um, so if you have read her before, or if you loved this book and want to read something that kind of plays with that dynamic a little bit more, um, that's probably my closest rec, but like you seemed eager. Yeah, I mean, I think Tiana already mentioned it, but Gone Girl, I think to me was the closest. Just like, I'm not just saying that because that's the stereotypical one that people react to, but like, it felt like reading Lucy's perspective a lot of times felt very much like readings from Amy's perspective, like the kind of like angry, scorned woman and how she wasn't afraid to like uh, vocalize that. Because I think a lot of the times, like, female rage is like, something that like authors kind of dance around and don't really indulge a lot. And so like this really reminded me of like Amy Dunn's POVs where she just like let it loose, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, go, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I'm gonna go with Midsonar and Gone Girl. Like they both fit for me. Um, but like again, Gone Girl for me is a comedy. So is Midsummer. Like they're very <laughs> funny movies, and Midsummer is sponsored by Clorox bleach. I don't care what y'all tell me. <laughs> um, it just uh, so like, <laughs> with Gone Girl, it was non-consensual what was going on, and it was it was a false murder plot. But this is a very like I have beef. I want to squash the beef in a very hateful, vengeful, suburban way. <laughs> Okay, Ace. 
I don't think this ever reminded me of anything. I guess it would be Gone Girl too, but at the same time, I didn't really finish Gone Girl because I was bored out of my mind. <laughs> I mean, I, mean <laughs> it, I guess it reminds me of like K dramas. Like, there's a lot of K dramas where the the guy is cheating and then the wife finds out and then they take revenge. But to me, this is such a different like. Um, take on revenge just because like she does it so differently from like oh her fixing her life and then stepping on his ass because he's like get down on the ditch and then she's like up there so this is really different <laughs> yeah we have uh, a comparison in the chat to deborah levy i'm a huge deborah levy stan so i will agree to this in the sense of like when megan hunter is writing at her strongest I can say that it's Deborah Levy. I will. I, I think that that vibe is correct. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think that this book has a, a, a too many low points for me to be like putting it on par in my brain. Just because <laughs> we love Deborah Levy in this house. Um, would you recommend this book to people, Tiana? I can probably assume your answer. Oh no! <laughs> Go no, no, no. ahead. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right. So my mentor um, from high school when I was talking about Gone Girl, because I was like, this shit is the only shit I've ever seen. He was like, yes, but all my mar all my non-married couple friends are always like, if you're married, do not watch Gone Girl. Do not watch anything remotely compared to this genre or topic, because it'll cause a rift in your own marriage. So if you're married <laughs> or if you're in a long relationship, I highly recommend you steer away from this, because it'll leave you with that weird gray area of understanding your relationship. So unless you're very, very, very securely like bolted in your relationship, I would not watch it or read this book. But yeah, if you're- Tiana, really Gone Girl's not a comedy. Like it's not intended to be a comedy, <laughs> nor is this book or Gone Girl intended to be like a moral compass for proper marriages. Like nobody's reading the harpy <laughs> and walking away saying like, oh, that's what I want to be I just like. Like, no. Okay, wait, wait. I kind of understand T what Tiana's saying though, because <laughs> me being in a long-term relationship, while I was reading this book, I was like, hmm. Like <laughs> see, see? I'm not, the, I'm not the bad guy. <laughs> but I would recommend this book for Harley Quinn, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm gonna leave oh, it just that. for her to read? Yeah, only for her. <laughs> I feel like this is a movie that Margot Robbie would produce and adapt. Yes, oh, yeah. It would be juicy, too. Like, it would be good. It would be juicier <laughs> than the book. Who would star in it? Margot Robbie. Robbie. Margot Robbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She'll produce it. She'll direct it. She'll star, and it'll be a great she experience. With, uh, I mean, she, she did that with I Tanya. I mean, she didn't direct it, but, like, she produced it. I Tanya was brilliant. It's one of my favorite movies. So, like, if Mark wants to pick this up, go for it, girl. <laughs> Honestly, while reading this book, I couldn't stop imagining Elizabeth Olsen and <laughs> the actor from, from Vision just because they also have two little boys. <laughs> oh my god. And then one I kept vision? imagining that one friend of hers. Um, Agnes? Yeah. As yeah, I was imagining Agnes as that girl. <laughs> oh my god. It was wow. such a cliche. <laughs> um, all right. I <laughs> no her non spoilery section. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I just this is a cliche. I don't know if I would recommend this book, honestly. Um I I liked it. And the the thing is though, it was so fast. Like I read it in basically two sittings. I couldn't do it in one day because I had some other stuff come up. But like if I was sitting down, I would have read it in a like one sitting. Like it was very, very fast. And so in that sense, I don't feel like it was um like if somebody was intrigued by the synopsis, I would say go for it because it is like almost no time commitment. Like I finished this book in in like an hour and 56 minutes. So it was basically like watching a movie, you know? Um, so in that sense, I don't feel like I wasted my time like and I enjoyed what I got out of it, but I wouldn't like be leaping out of my seat to recommend it. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you, Blake, because I feel like I wouldn't, I would never like deter someone from reading this or be like, no, it's terrible, like go away, you know? But I I feel like there are so many other books that I've read that do elements of this book better. And so if somebody was like, I want to read about a twisted marriage, I would have a di different, recommend different recommendation. If somebody wanted to read like something with like dark fairy tale vibes, I have a different recommendation for that. Um, and while this book does kind of a bunch of things together, I don't know if it's like the strongest. I would love to see other books 
do what this does and if it could be done better for sure. I think it would have helped it if it had like high stakes, like something to like stake us and like help us direct us through this. Cause I was like, okay. We're yeah, I feel like We're we can talk more about that in the spoiler section too, because I have some thoughts on that as well. Same. Um, for sure. Um, but you know, ultimately, we read it. You know, it's here. That's a pretty good non-spoilery section, if I do say so myself. Um, if anybody is interested in reading it, pick it up. Maybe that's kind of our conclusion. <laughs> yeah. Ace, what, uh, um, would you recommend it? Oh, honestly, I don't know. I'm like, if you want to read it, go ahead. You, I'll give you my thoughts. That's all. <laughs> I want to say this is one of the most beautiful book covers I've ever yeah. seen. Like, it's amazing. I wish. Yes. Like, was good. Well, also, like, faceless woman is such a oversaturated book cover trend. Like, if you're gonna do it, do it like this. Like, this is the <laughs> way to do so. What is um, a cover? I fully agree with that. It's, it's two wings. wings. Are her like, ears? Girl. Yeah. They're they're like so ears. It, it's abstract, Ace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, I okay. haven't read The Silent Patient. I heard about it, though. I, I heard mixed things. How um, long did I talk about this? <laughs> it's better than the song. Oh. I definitely want to get into spoilery section. Um, but before we do, we should announce our next month's book club pick, which is Ace's book club pick. I have it right here. It's a beautiful book. Can we go get it? Um, the Death of Vivek Oji by Akwaki Amezi. Um, so we will be having this uh, discussion on the last Wine Wednesday of the month over on Ace's channel. Wait, how do I point? Okay, it's mirrored, so it's hard. Okay. Everyone point to Ace <laughs> over on Ace's channel. I am so excited you chose this because I have been dying to read this book. I, I, I think it's going to be a great it. time. Uh, yeah, and there's so much content out there on BookTube for it. So many people have done amazing reviews. So many people have talked about it. So like, I feel like we'll have a lot to discuss. Tiana, it looks like you want to say something. I would like to respectfully say, before we get into that book in uh, May, to go look up the author's profile, pronouns, history, just so we're all clear on the situation. Not situation, we're just like, we're being respectful. Yeah. yeah. Quickie and Mente, uh, she, or they go by they, them pronouns. So, cool. It, and then, um, as such. Blake, the following month, what's yeah. going on? So we have uh, our, so if you didn't know, our May book pick is um, The Wolf of Orin Yara, <laughs> which I'm not at home, so I don't have. Um, and we will be doing a author interview with K.S. Veloso. Um, that will be separate from our uh, discussion because obviously we would like to just discuss the book without feeling like we need to hold anything back. So we will have the discussion on the same wine, like last Wednesday of the month. Um, but we will keep you updated when that author interview is going to be. Um, and with dates and stuff, it might even be like the first week of June or something like that. We will keep you guys updated with all that info and we will definitely know by April's live show. So yeah. Absolutely. Very exciting news. Yeah. And then- We're kind uh, of like, legit so we know like <laughs> wow uh and then tiana would you like to announce uh june yes book? let me grab her let me grab her that's right i also didn't know that we selected june's book so i'm very excited for this oh, <laughs> it's a surprise yes, to me it is oh. Girl. Oh. It's oh, girl. Girl. <laughs> yeah so june is honey girl I'm, I'm in their dms I'm, I'm waiting for a response back hopefully we can do something with the author soon or in the future but this is our gym book pick of the month. I am ready for sapphic vibes because I, 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 I haven't had anything sapphic since um, the Seven Husbands of Ellen Hugo, which left me wrecked. So will I be I wrecked? I love that book. Who knows? <laughs> And uh, we are just like, we will be announcing more of our picks going forward. We're, we're doing it like in advance to give you guys time to uh, read the audiobook or listen to the audiobook, like find the book at your local library, find like ebook deals, things like that, um, just to give you guys ample time. Uh, and also because, you know, we're still in the panty, so uh, <laughs> money is not liquid. <laughs> I think Amazing. It is National Teachers Appreciation Month last week. So Barnes Noble does do 10 to 20% off off of your entire purchase. Mm -hmm. Hey, so love those deals. There, they're looking out for you. 
Also, quick shout out, I do believe it is uh, Trans Visibility Day. So yes. a massive, uh, we see you and we love you to all of our trans viewers and friends out there. Absolutely. Okay. I know Tiana's ready. I know I'm ready. Mm. Ace, are you ready? Blake, are you ready? Yeah. Let's go into yeah. some non-spoilery oh, discussion. Are we doing no, this I think we can spoilery. do this. I think you said oh, non-spoilery. I did that last time too. My goodness. Okay, yes. We're going into the most spoilery section. Thank you. Um, I think because this book is broken up into four parts, we can kind of break it down that way ourselves. Um, I think I right off the bat. Ready. My notes are ready. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I have notes. I have notes. I have notes too. I in quotes. I have no notes. I'm in here. I I get the, no no. I'm, the I'm with you, Ace. <laughs> um. But I think we can talk about the opening scene, which I think was, for me, incredibly striking. A great demonstration of Megan Hunter's writing ability. I was very intrigued. I was aghast. Um, just... Apparently not everyone else was because <laughs> you're looking up what that first scene was. Um, <laughs> go ahead, take your time. It's fine. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a flash forward. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh my God, I just realized that. What the heck? <laughs> I'm so slow. I'm this is why I don't the like... day of because I have it fresh <laughs> in my head. <laughs> See, I was waiting for that moment to happen the whole book, and I was here's the thing: I was expecting that to be like number one or number yeah. two. And okay, I'm just gonna okay, I'm just gonna go off real quick. I know we're in part one, but like I'm just gonna okay, go for it. okay, so, okay. The most shocking the book ever got for me was at the second reveal when she sent the naked photos in the email that was the most oh shit moment honestly when she accidentally cut his femoral artery i did not care um <laughs> like, no because it was like here's the thing at that moment like she had just been betrayed again she had this rage and this and then she just like it's like, oh no, it's okay. And then she accidentally cuts it. Like that to me, what it, it, the payoff didn't really feel paid off uh, because she had all this anger building up the whole novel and she didn't even do it purposefully. And then she just killed herself. Like, like I, if you're gonna do it full throttle, bitch, don't hold back. 100%. Yeah, and that that's like my thing. And maybe that's just my bad expectations from reading like revenge novels in the past. But like, I felt like it was almost like justified because we were having those snippets of the harpy interspersed throughout so much. And it was giving us like, she's gonna do the revenge. She's gonna claw his eyes out. She's gonna, you know, it just all this like bird imagery and like things like that. And I was ready for something crazy. Uh, and I just felt like it didn't quite deliver. Like, but I, have minded if she I did like Opie. <laughs> Already got off topic, but yeah. I know you're good. Um, where do I begin? Um, let's look at the notes because I have notes. So in the, be <laughs> in the beginning, right? I think it was in the ep epilogue, no, pr prologue, where Jack's like, she's married. What ring, what marriage certificate, what relationship titles ever stopped anyone from proceeding with an affair a ever like what does saying she's married have to defend this with well i i think it, it was like that was when they first met or like she first knew about vanessa being a co-worker and he that's what he said defensively as like a, oh she's married we're just co-workers it's it fine like that was his, like that you know never but like tiana we can't pretend like this book is operating on a healthy psychological <laughs> level this yeah, book yeah. doesn't work if we expect our characters to be good people this book is only successful if we suspend our disbelief to the point where what is the psychology of yeah. somebody who behaves this way and yeah i also i mean it's to me it's kind of like a cliche like oh she's married therefore i you know nothing's gonna happen like that's right. kind of like that is something that people say in moments of infidelity right. um and like yeah it's gonna be morally gray it's gonna make us feel icky it's gonna be like something that we don't like in the real life but like mm -hmm. what does it mean for this book's world right. is what i'm excited about it was interesting seeing um lucy and jack have children because I was like, okay, who's gonna get caught in the crossfire here? Like, is one parent gonna, cause I, you know, early stage of the book, I was like, is someone gonna leave? And then they become their own person. Like, where is this gonna go? And you progressively see the children like lash out and get violent and get physical 
with and i'm just like this is an accurate interpretation of how children react even even in the age group when their parents are going through something because they're gonna take it out physically Mm -hmm. so honestly catch up on that or no most of the time i forgot the kids were there the only <laughs> time that i really uh was like oh my god was when she started like driving like yeah, really exactly. i was like miss you are crazy you need to calm down like she was going full throughout her whole her kids were like screaming in the back scene then they went silent i was like that was like diabolical <laughs> i thought she was gonna crash the car you gonna do it? I, mean, do it I think it, it it fully speaks to like this novel's ability to maintain suspense. That in a moment yeah. like that, a moment of like Ace, what you were talking about earlier, dissociation of like mm -hmm. that moment of what if in her brain that constantly keeps coming back, and then I think is fully realized by the end that what if. Um, I think that is a great example of that. But Tiana, I, I do agree that there was really nice moments of while the main characters in their viewpoints didn't quite notice themselves that the kids were acting out, the details were there. Yeah. And it did show that they didn't quite realize the impact of their actions on their family, on their friends, etc. cetera. Um, and I think it was from the beginning too, because the first strike against um, him, the first strike that they decided, like that, well, they didn't decide upon it, but her first strike against him was like essentially poisoning him. Um, and. <laughs> making him super hilarious. sick i okay i know that you we really liked the sending the photos and like that was a scandalous moment i thought that was like pun intended sick i thought that was so <laughs> twisted i thought that was like brilliant oh, um I that like it. he's there feeling like he has food poisoning or whatever and she's just like that's number one and i was like done i was so impressed. no i love that especially when she's like i I had a I had another saucepan and he's like what like <laughs> she he's like he's like throwing up in the toilet and she's like I poisoned you. <laughs> okay, but here's the thing. What so when when she agrees to hurting him and like having this whole like three strike rule, was she intoxicated? Was he like where was the like I think he was. So from there on out, because I was talking to someone and we were discussing like BDSM and, and um, MS. And I was like, well, that would be okay if it was for sexual pleasure, consensual, like we know the parameters of the thing going on. Because when you're in that relationship, you like you, the um, master in that relationship takes on the role to educate their sub, let them know, hey, this is gonna happen, but you're not gonna know yeah. it's gonna happen. And these are the examples I'm gonna present to you. That's what that is. So when well, I was, I was like, like this, this doesn't have any sexual benefit. Yeah, I know, I know. This is purely <laughs> punishment. Um, this is like a fully unsexy novel. <laughs> very like i mean it, it's very because in that moment i think when he was drunk he was fully being truthful in the fact that he wanted his, his family back he was like i will do whatever it takes and he noticed that she like he uh that she liked like digging into him and she was he was like that's what you want right like that's but does that go into his king, well, not king but it, does that go into his self-deprecation and his pain or does that go into like pr pleasing her in um, making the marriages like stable. I think that's it. I think the second one is what it is. I think it's him. I think getting even is like in his brain. I think he uh -huh. wants to feel justified in his behavior by letting her do something awful. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's how like that, that's why the, the sending of the pictures is so pivotal because it goes beyond his expectations. Yeah. But then I mean, he does feel part. justified it by it. There, I mean, no, 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 he said something. Oh, Ace, sorry. Oh. Ace? Oh, oh no. me? Yeah. I was just saying that I was just agreeing that, you know, he that's probably why he agreed to it was that they can get even. And that's why he said anyways. I think I remember seeing it in the book somewhere that then they would get even because he's getting hurt in the process. Yeah. And I mean there's yeah. that moment where she almost uh tries to sleep with that other guy and then yeah. she's like no, I'm not going to do that because it's not going to hurt him. He's going to think that we're even now, but he's not jealous. And so it won't actually hurt him. So we're not doing this. And I th like that was like so calculated the way that she thought that through it. Like none of it was like, oh, I want to have sex with this man. She's like, how can I hurt him in the most like severe way, basically? Yeah. I just... 
Tiana, you want to talk about the pictures? The pictures. Okay, okay. I've been, I've been waiting for this one. I have been waiting for this one. Because why do I care that you are searching for your man's, like, searching through the phones, searching for the pics, searching for proof? Should I, why should I care about your feelings if you're going to, like, let everything implode and explode around you? Like, you went searching for it. You found your confirmation. You sent it out to people. And then when he comes home, he's like, I have to look in my staff members' eyes now. My faculty's mad. I'm just like, your your priorities are mixed up. You're mad that your faculty knows your business when you were airing your dirty laundry out with your coworker who's married. Well, I, I mean, mean, like to a degree, that was private. It wasn't like they went around like, I mean, people knew. It's it a was university. Even well, I yeah, know. but... <laughs> I mean, yeah, but like, I, you know, sending nude, like, sexed photos to all of your colleagues, yeah. that is a, I was- It's a crime? It's a crime. Yeah. It's a, it's a crime. Yeah, yeah, it's revenge porn. And I, I'm surprised that he didn't get fired because, like, it, it wasn't like, I'm, it wasn't that I'm embarrassed. It, it was that, but then also I could lose my job. Like, he even says, like, you rely on my income. You, you're going to lose everything for our family. And she was just kind of like, eh. I think like this is a, a moment in the book where given the psychology that we're presented with, given the world that we're buying into, this was a moment where they became on equal footing. Yeah. Um, and I don't necessarily agree with that. Like in real life where this to break down, I feel, you know, there's, I feel like there's a clear, you know, imbalance of power for sure. But like, I think that was a moment of like impact. Like we were talking earlier, like your kids might not have a house anymore because this was one of your strikes against me. And also, like, I don't know if she quite understood what she did in that moment. I thought it was very unclear what she was choosing to do when she sent those photos. I think it's because yeah. of association. I feel like she did understand, though, just because she sent it, was it after the Christmas party? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me... <laughs> No, yeah, no, because her, she was thinking about her second strike being sleeping with the other, with the other. Yeah, guy. Oh, yeah. I feel like the out. reason why she sent those pictures was because during the Christmas party, wait, okay, during the Christmas party, like everyone was kind of like hinting that they knew, and then yeah. that part where they apologized to her and it was just like asking her like what's wrong it's like everyone was asking her about it and then you see like her husband and it doesn't seem like it's affecting him at all and so she wanted him to feel affected in his space and that's why right. she sent the picture because to her even at her ho own home like everyone is like asking her oh are you okay like you know you could talk mm -hmm. to someone but then no one was doing that to him so he she had to invade his space somehow yeah, I mean, that's definitely, I think, what she was thinking. Um, and also, we have a visitor. Is it a puppy? Oh. oh. This is a good intermission. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is Velcro. Oh, hey, say hi Velcro. to everyone. That's a great that's name. So what an inspired said name. <laughs> um, well, when uh, she was a kitten, my dad picked her up, and she wouldn't let go of him. And he was like, oh, she's sticking to me on Velcro. And then he was like, oh. and then and then he had to take her home. It was, it that was is a, so pure. Very dad. <laughs> very dad Truly the opposite of what we're talking about oh, is yeah. that story. <laughs> I am so thankful there were no animals in this um, book because uh -uh, no, no, I don't want any cuteness attached to this dark book. But um, I want to go a little bit back, not not back, but like talking about like the first part, like before she even gets that phone call from mm -hmm. Vanessa's husband. So like, was she willfully ignorant? Was she blatantly ignorant? And like getting getting that confirmation like before incident and then living in a life of after. So like, I wish we got, it's not like I wish we got like the before life because we're dealing with the, the psychology in this book as Matthew is saying, but we, we don't know the psychology before what's going on. I'm curious about that too, but you know, I think, it's, the way that this book starts, like if we're talking about this book, I, I, a lot of the discussion about this book is how it's like a fairy tale um, or like a fable or a myth. Um, and the way that it starts is very in media race, you know, yeah. a la myth, fable, fairy tale. Um, and so we start with like an inciting incident in that way. And I think that that's 
powerful and it makes me like part of me does want to go back and know like were they happy or like were there signs but then part of me is like does it matter because it's confirmed um because I, you want i think if you like trying to keep a family together if you love the partner that you're with you want to believe that they are good because yeah, because you have to not talking to each other like i well, live in a dark I think school that I that to me, I think Matthew was the most powerful part of the book because there is that moment after she hurt him for the second time where he's like, this is too far. And she's like, yeah. And then they genuinely try and it seems like they're getting along and, yeah. and then she just decides to go for a walk and then sees them together again. And it's just like this shattering moment where she thought that like she had done everything she needed to that he had considered them even, like all that kind of stuff, but it just, it didn't matter in the end, you know? And I don't no. think less of her for not knowing or not seeing no. signs. Like, I feel yeah. like it's it's kind of the implication that like, oh, didn't you know that your husband's a bastard? And it's like, no, and like, that's okay. And we shouldn't judge her for that. Right. Because even in the beginning, she's like, I know his looks. Like, I know when he's happy. I know he has an inquiry. And then, she gets this confirmation of like, there hasn't been an affair. She's like, do I really know him? And then once she has that context, she's like, that's the lie. I know where it is now. It's so like, she knows him, but like once you've been married to someone and have kids with someone, they, they people change, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I think it speaks to like their disconnect and how love deplenished when they were fine not speaking to each other, okay? Like I lived in a dorm people that I, had a language barrier with, and I still spoke to them. I lived with a predatory person in my dorm, and I didn't like it. I wanted out of there constantly. And like, I still managed to say hi and good morning, but they were just like, nope, nope, not today. And, and I think the kids definitely picked up on that, you know, yep. and that's why they were acting out. Because you, you learn your language by hearing your parents speak, and mommy and daddy ain't speaking. Language development, grades lower. You're mad that your grades are lower. Mom's fighting at you because you're, like, it's a whole cycle. <laughs> I live with a teacher, so I know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I would like to, to pivot a little bit and just try to talk about the fairy tale elements. I think something that we did hit on is change and metamorphosis. And I think that is kind of part of the main character's journey is discovering or at least rediscovering this version of herself that is Harpy. Now, this is like most exemplified in the ending of the book, for sure. That's basically the entire like part four is like a metaphorical or maybe not, I don't know, mm -hmm. um, explanation of like growing wings and jumping. Um, but I, I'm curious about like what parts of this felt most fairy tale to you and did you find them to be like successful or not in the telling of the story? To me, the most fairy tale was like just the whole premise of you can hurt me three times. Like, you know, the number three, like three wishes that like that, that that's very fairy tale in itself and also gives the story structure. Cause a lot of the times with these like short fairy tales, there would, you know, they, they're, they're short, they're tiny. They're meant to be, you know, told before bedtime. So they have these kind of like three arc like little little acts, you know, like with Goldilocks, you know, she has like the three bears that she goes, you know, so it's a very common kind of fairy tale trope. And because of that, you're like, even after the, like the second one, and then, you know, she's like, you know, that's like not enough, like we're moving on. In the back of my, your mind, you're like, there's still one, like she still has one left, you know? So like, even though like you think everything's fine, that's always in the back of your mind. And you're like, she's still got one, you know? It's like Inception. You know, there's like three, four tears. And then at the last one, they're like, ha, you forgot there was the last tier. We're still in this. We got to get out of it. And then, oh my. Yeah. I will make I any book connection to a movie. I am so sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say the most fairy tale moments was when she dissociated and like she mm -hmm. would see those happy moments from like it's like she's watching herself and it's like she's acknowledging that she is the harpy as um we, happens throughout the entire book and so whenever she referred to herself like in third person I felt like those were the most like fairy tale because then it's like the villain is not there which is basically her and um like it's all the happy moments. It reminded me I, almost of that that fairy tale. Uh, I forget it was, but it's it's about the the like the girl who like turns into the goose and she has like the seven goose brothers. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's the ugly duckling, right? 
No, 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 not that one. It's like a completely different one. Like she has like seven brothers or something. And then like she turns into a goose. Does anybody in the chat know I'm what I'm talking about? <laughs> if you know the myth about the goose and girl. I Wait, I think well. I know what you're talking about because I think I'm pretty sure that's what Six Crimson and Crazy are about, is about. I'm Googling. Yeah, it's literally called The Goose Girl. It's Yeah, it's from the Brothers Grimm. The Six yeah. Swans. Like what about that myth or story or uh, fairy tale makes you think of this book? Well, I don't like, know it, so. Well, uh, I, can't, I can't remember specifics right now without reading the whole thing. But, uh, you know, it, it's it's about this girl who basically she turns into, uh, yes, yes, she does. Yes, she does. Um, but it, it's it's almost that kind of, uh, or maybe it is the Six Swans. I don't know. I am I'm questioning everything right now. But basically, from what I can remember, the girl, like, she's turning into, like, this this bird, and, like, she kind of doesn't want to, but, it like, fate kind of makes it so that she has to, um, and she kind of doesn't have a choice. It's kind um, of like the um, the, the sewing gold uh, Greek fable, where, like, she doesn't do it, she has to marry off to this guy. It's kind of like that. Maybe. Um, but anyways, so it reminded me of this, but in, like, kind of an inverse way, whereas, like, I felt like Lucy over the course of this novel, she was turning into the harpy, but she was like embracing it more and more. So instead of like pushing it away and like rejecting it, it was more this kind of accepting of like, this is who I actually am. And like this human part of me is, it, that's the the myth. That's what I'm wearing, you know? Yeah, which like, you know, Blake, I know you mentioned that the ending wasn't as strong for you as the the sending of the photo, like her third strike wasn't as strong. But I'm like, I find I found that like her embracing that part of herself was that moment, like that moment of like, oopsie, um, <laughs> in terms of like her, her cutting him. Um, I, I think like, that was a psychological breakthrough that was the climax in many ways of her journey and her narrative and while it wasn't satisfying i think for him because we're also still writing his narrative too and like a third strike for him that would have been like the strongest i think would have kind of like completed his story i found it very satisfying for her um mm -hmm. because that was a moment that you know it did all come together i, I think yeah. blood sacrifice don't know if there was like intentional imagery in that but i did like it um, well, I loved how she just immediately lied on the phone and was like, I just found him in there with a razor. Like, I don't know what happened. She was ready. She was freaking, she, she knew what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. I think it was like her realization, like she, she is the harpy. Like, I think that's when she fully realized, like, she's the one who's been doing everything. Yeah. And, and I, kind of segueing off of that into the end, and um, like, I, I both like and also don't like the ending because like yeah she embraces being a harpy and jumps and flies um and you know kills herself but like to me i i don't know it's it still felt like i like not enough for me like it felt a little cheap like like this was a very easy way to end the story almost yeah. and like, that yeah the character didn't deserve like an easy ending like i wanted to see her kind of like wrestle with the implications of what she's done or like you know moving on or like i i don't, I don't know what i wanted but i, I just felt like suicide was it, it was a little too neat in, in a weird yeah. sense, if that makes and i don't know if it was intended to be specifically a suicide or if it was supposed to be some sort of like you know fabulous moment or if it was just supposed yeah. to be metaphorical entirely um but i think a lot of it was I, 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 harpies, I think, in mythology are supposed to be like lonely creatures. Like they yeah. don't, yeah, they don't associate or they don't have families. They don't take partners. Like, I think it was kind of her breaking free from the constraints of family and being tethered to a man, um, which I still agree is like a really dissatisfying conclusion to that narrative. Like, if that's like the ending, if that's that's what I got out of it, I'm still unhappy by it. <laughs> Um, but I, you know, I think it makes, you know, I think it makes sense. I just don't think it's good enough. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there was this part about generations. <laughs> <laughs> Could just be high. 
Dude, I honestly <laughs> thought she just went to the forest and lived on her own. I'm like, okay, live your cottage girl life, girl. She <laughs> fully became like, okay, have you yeah. guys seen uh, American Horror Story season six? No. Okay, because. No. In that season, Lady Gaga is like this witch who like lives in the woods and she's all like grungy and shit. That's exactly what that reminded Solid. me of. Solid. Like, I really thought that's what she did at the end. And then when it ended like that, I was honestly so disappointed because this, the book was so strong and like it yeah. didn't shock away from addressing things and going head on. And then we just leave off of this after the third one. And I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> And it wasn't a satisfying, like, it wasn't, like, I feel like sometimes you can go with, like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> this, is, this is Lucy at the end of the book. She <laughs> gave <laughs> Solid. Solid. <laughs> but, uh, I completely lost my train of thought. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> no, like, I think, um, I, I think that the ending, no, I really did lose my train of thought. I have no idea what I was going to say. It was strong. It felt neat. Um, I'm just trying to help you re recap. Uh, uh. We're talking about her living in the forest. <laughs> it's okay. Lady Gaga trumps all thoughts. It's fine. <laughs> I was going with generational but, anger and bad. Um, I think, like. Yes. I was just saying, never seeing a healthy relationship. And I think also never having a strong parental figure because she mentions abandoning her kids and there's this like m m modern attachment to having to have to having a maternal instinct with your kids nowadays it's not necessarily true because in the last century um your kid wasn't guaranteed to live past the age of seven so they just said okay kid number one kid number two having like names and baby rooms is a new modern thing so when she says she wanted to leave her kids and didn't care. I was like, you never pack up and leave, first of all, because if you stay, you don't get filed for abandonment, you get custody. Once you leave, your husband's getting custody. Point blank, period. Well, I think she wasn't really thinking about that. And then also, I think we do have to consider the fact that she was a very uh, present witness to her parents' abuse right. and like the dad abusing her mom. And so I think maybe to that sense she was detached from her kids like right. it, it's it's very like poignant in the book i think to yeah. like, like you really notice how right. detached she is from her children and i think that does play into the ending and how okay she was with just leaving everything behind throughout the but book but i also think like what oh go ahead oh i was just going to say like throughout the book she mentions how she shouldn't be a mother at all and like how how is she like a good mother or anything like that those are normal feelings yeah like what is the opposite of the pure motherly and in, in fairy tales? What is the opposite of like the pure mother, you know, sacrificial, you know, ca character? It's the harpy. It's it's the witch. It's the you know, like I think this. While I don't think it was like the most successfully executed theme in the book, I do think like analyzing the pressures on perfect motherhood was part of this narrative, um, and. I think that her breaking free from that was indicative of Megan Hunter trying to talk about that um, perfect wifehood or perfect motherhood. Right. I don't think she so. agreed. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I just think I'm gonna assume she was 30, 35, pushing forty. I want to say I think with that generation, maternity and being a parent is like very heavily like forced on them. Being like, oh, I have to be married. I have to be a mom. And I think that's what let her oh. be a parent um, no i i actually i'm into this i'm into this because one of my biggest things that i was confused about was when she was talking about vanessa she specifically pointed out that she was of an older generation she yeah. didn't talk about looks about skills about brains about anything the biggest critique that she had was like but she's like not in my generation right and i was I, you know, like maybe it is a commentary on age and like that was just the phrasing that she used to talk about it but like i do think vanessa in many ways because she didn't have children Children was an ideal that she was fighting against. Yeah. That like, of course he slept with her in her attachment to family. And like, was that what was so psychologically taxing about that moment for her? Right. But yeah, I just the point Sorry, out. I went off. I got no, excited. I just like, you have to have kids. You have to be married. If you are not ready to be a parent, then you're ready to be a parent. Like, full throttle. That's an okay decision. I think, um, 
we have people like in our generation to tell people that like it's okay to feel what you're feeling that you're valid but with um older millennials and with the boomers and the uh, i forget what's before that after that they think oh i need to have kids to be a mom and to be a wife nope yeah and i i, I like this comment because i think it does show that she was excited to start a family like especially like in the beginning but i i, I do think at least from what we know because the kids are pretty young uh at the at the start of the the book and, and she's had them for like you know a number of years now and i feel like maybe she was excited at the prospect of having kids but the reality of having kids maybe isn't what she wanted or what yeah. she expected um because she like i in my opinion at least i feel like she was very detached but then yeah she does have those paradoxical paradoxical moments where she does talk about how she was so excited for a family how she was so or in love with jake but then like we don't really see the effects of that love so uh, honestly a lot of the stuff we have to kind of take her word for because yeah. we aren't around for those parts in her life i'm a reliable narrator 100 percent, and it's yeah. just like 100 <laughs> percent. i mean do we really think she's a bird <laughs> well, so oopsie that's, accidentally that's cut your art oops <laughs> I just wish she had someone to talk to because she, so there is this mention of the house. And I felt like for me, the house was like a second party character because she was stuck in the house. She was always talking about the house for like a friend. Seems like second birth. Mm, yep, sure was. And <laughs> I was a Syrian baby. Um, I feel like the house trapped her in and she never felt like she could talk to anybody. Like usually moms have mom friends to talk about their weird children. <laughs> sometimes yeah. well that's that's interesting that you talk about the house because to me i felt that the house at the climax of the novel her going back to her parents house that was very like kind of indicative of her character mm -hmm. and that like i don't think she ever really mentally left that house and so that's yes. why she returned there at the end of the book is because she was like just so trapped in that cyclical abuse that she witnessed as a child and you know and then you know she becomes almost feral at the end you know living in the woods and stuff like she is not ready to grow up and be an adult like a coherent person especially after like this recent trauma with her husband right i, I wouldn't even say recent i would say it's unhealed trauma from her parents and her child no i know it's like she has past yeah, yeah. trauma but then like this new trauma kind of like opened up the wound and so like maybe she was carrying that all of these years and then she's just yeah. like i can't do it anymore you know i was just gonna say that like there was this part in the book where she says that the house has been her friend and the house is like a place where she she can feel being herself but then Jake starts sleeping on the couch and then she's like everywhere she goes it's just all him so that's why I feel like in the end she was like so easily like able to just leave that house because she it wasn't hers anymore she didn't feel attached to it anymore and she couldn't even feel herself anymore. I See, this is why I love me. book clubs because it makes me feel like the book is smarter than it actually is, and it makes me like the book <laughs> more. Like, because like, who knows if Megan Hunter is like actually intending all of this? But like, we sure sussed it out. Like, <laughs> like you yeah, have the house. She's a well, cottage poor fairy now. <laughs> the freaking exams I took for Fitzgerald. Um, what's that book? The Great Gatsby. They make like when he, when he touches the clock and he drops the clock. The test answer was, why is he doing yada yada? It's because he's losing track of time. And I'm just like, but was it really? Was but that's also literary criticism. Like, that's like, that's how, like, there's value in reading in, right. I personally feel. Because... Yeah, I personally yeah. just really enjoy talking about this because like even like because I read the book and I was like, oh, OK, OK. But then like now, you know, when you, we peel back the layers and right. we have our different like points of view about the book and like what it contains, like I uh, almost like want to look back on this book uh, with more fondness, if that makes sense. Um, also, it's just fun to read stuff with you guys. I think so, it's going to be used in a college course at some point because it opens or a psychology course. I don't know if it's that popular enough. I think psychology. I don't, yeah. You'd I'm be curious surprised. about. You'd be surprised. I I mean, I don't think it was that successful of a publication. Sorry, I don't think it was like that successful of a publication. Um, I don't know if its sales were like stellar, but you know, I do feel like there is a lot of imagery. There's a lot to unpack. Like you could take a section of this and like dive deep into it. There is something that is lyrical and poetic about her writing that I think is like worth 
investing in. And I also wouldn't put anything that we've discussed past her. Like, I, I feel like if she constructed the story this way, there had to have been immense intention behind it. And for it to be as petite as it is, yes. there was clearly editing done to make it so. Okay. So I was going through the quotes I wrote down and this is actually something, wow. Okay. Because uh, we were talking about like kind of, you know, her relationship with her children. And there's this quote from page 34. She said, uh, marriage and motherhood are like death in this way and others too. No one comes back unchanged. Even now it is hard to look at that woman myself at those boys, my sons, with anything like a clear lens, my sight is still colored, infused by the blood we shared, by their journeys through my lightless body. I think, yeah, that thematically ties it in. To be honest, I do think that marriage and motherhood are like a death in this way is not like, it's not the most graceful <laughs> metaphor. Um, but I, I do think that it does hit on, I well, like, it, like, no one comes back unchanged. Like you're like, I don't know. The idea that you're presenting that you can come back from death is, is an interesting, you know, psychological element right. to explore for sure. Um, rebirth being a thing. Um, is she anyway, I, <laughs> there were so many parts of the writing that I was just like enthralled by and so obsessed with. And then so many parts of the writing where I was just like, you, okay. Like, I don't, what level are you working on? What metaphor is this? Like, why do you think that, you know, like, I don't know. There, were, there was, I felt like a lot of it was kind of extraneous sometimes for what was, the good parts were just so good. That's what I'm trying to say. The yeah. good parts were so good. <laughs> I, I, like, I think, uh, I think Max asked this in the chat earlier. Um, he said, would you read her other book, which has a higher rating uh, and is about the same length, or actually I think it's less length. Um, yeah, I would. Like, I, I think Megan Hunter is an author that I would definitely pick up again, just because I did really enjoy the prose in this book. And like, I would yeah. like to see how her kind of narrative writing will transform as she writes more, uh, because I think she did create some compelling characters and like compelling voices. And I did like the prose. Um, I just like, as the whole package, I want it just a little bit stronger, but I think she has the potential to do so. Yeah, I agree. I would read it as well. Um, I, I have no reason not to. Um, but I also think that um, the, I feel like there was a lot of this that I felt like was like very close to home or cared for in a way in tone. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious if like a debut would have a freshness to it that I feel like wasn't, wouldn't be as like labored as some parts of this. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely will probably pick it up. Ace. Like this is a debut. No, her her first book was her debut. Oh, okay. Um, this okay. is her second novel, okay. or I believe I think I may have, might be wrong. Let me look it up. July pick. <laughs> <laughs> no, our July pick is coming soon, and it's going to be fantastic. I'm not going to reveal it yet, but oh, July is also my birth month, and it's my book pick. So get excited. <laughs> yeah. So her first book um, was called The End We Start From. Uh, I'll just read the synopsis real quick. It says, in the midst of a mysterious environmental crisis, as London is submerged below floodwaters, a woman gives birth to her first child, Z. Days later, the family are forced to leave their home and search for safety. As they move from place to place, shelter to shelter, their journey traces both fear and wonder as Z's small fist grasps at things he sees as he grows and stretches, thriving and content against all the odds. This is a story of new motherhood in a terrifying setting, a familiar world made dangerous and unstable, its people forced to become refugees. So. I don't know if I it. <laughs> No, I mean, just, after that description, Ace was out. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Okay, I really like this just because I love a, a good revenge plot, but I really hate the ending. And I was rooting for her the entire time. And that's why I enjoyed it. And like the sending the pictures, the making him sick because she felt sick about what he did. But then that first book, I don't know, the synopsis seems so underwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> See, that synopsis is something that I would like instantly pick up. It's something that I would definitely read. So, like, I'm for it. Tiana, would you read her first book? Questo año volio. Oh, sure. <laughs> Sorry. This year, I wanted to read more. Um, what's the word in English? Um, li literary friction. Um, I did it. I read more. <laughs> <laughs> 
So your answer is no? <laughs> I, I, I might. Um, I think... I, like the, I don't know. The synopsis doesn't blow me away. Also, she ha- she does seem that like her a theme that she likes to write about is motherhood and like yeah. that relationship. Um, and that's and I, fine. Yeah, that's, no, that's it's totally fine. No, it's totally fine. I'm not saying that like I don't want to read it because of that. I'm just saying that I think that's an interesting theme, and I wonder if her uh, her next novel is going to also have a theme of motherhood in that as well. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't yeah. adding at you. I was just saying like motherhood is fine. I'm just in my twenties. I don't. <laughs> My, my uterus, my hips, no. I don't want Aces, that. Aces, no. <laughs> I think uterus is the perfect place to wrap this conversation <laughs> up on. Um, we have hit our hour, um, and I think that we have talked this book to, uh, I feel like we could still talk about it even more, but um, I feel like we have talked about it plenty. Um, thank you so much to everyone who joined in. Thank you to my lovely co-hosts who always offer wonderful, insightful, <laughs> and interesting perspectives. Um, and make sure, <laughs> I'm like a game show host. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> make sure that um, you stay tuned, follow us on the, so follow the Discord, subscribe to Discord. Wow. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Join the Discord. Discord. Um, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter to have updates on our forthcoming books. Um, and make sure you're subscribed to Ace Ace, so that you are ready for our next live show, which will be the death of Vivek OG. I'm so uh, thank you so much, everyone. You're all wonderful. And see you guys next month. See you next month. <laughs>